Okay, uh, good morning and welcome to this morning's Python lecture. Um, let's see. Okay. Now, when, it, when, you're, when you're writing a computer program, it's very, very difficult and it's very, very rare that when you write your program for the first time, it's going to run without mistakes. So most of the time, your computer program, when you run it, especially for the first time, there will be these mistakes, these errors. And these errors are what we call exceptions. Are we clear? Now, the reason why a computer program could have errors is because maybe you, as a person who is trying to program the computer, does not have a good understanding, or your understanding of the language you're using is poor, Hence the reason why we have these lectures, so that we end up having a good understanding of the Python programming language. The other reason could be that maybe you don't really understand the problem very, very well, so that you can translate it into something which the computer can understand, so that it carries out the, the task in such a way that it produces the results you expect. So if the errors are because you do not understand the language properly. Then you create an error. Such errors are what are called syntax errors. Okay, because your understanding of the language is not very good. And also, if you're, you understand the language, but you have not really understand, uh, understood the problem properly, and you try to translate the problem into something which the computer understands, but the results look dodgy, then in such a case, such errors are called runtime errors or logical errors. Okay, so there is a whole lot of reasons why you could have errors or these exceptions. So we want to see, and, and, and when a computer, your program encounters these exceptions, it automatically terminates the program and your program literally crashes. So that's not what we want. We want to have a way, a mechanism of handling these exceptions in such a way that before your computer program terminates or stops, it tells you in a nice way to say, okay, fine, I am stopping because of this kind of error, I found this kind of error, and this is what the problem is. So this is what we want to do. Of course, because there's an error, your program will have to come to an end, but it doesn't have to compl just cut like that. Okay. Now, the other reason why a program could have errors is because maybe everything is fine. You understand the language very well. Your programming, like last, uh, when we're doing the, our lab, when we're working out the, creating the program for the quadratic function, uh, the quadratic problem, we understood what the problem was. So maybe you have a good understanding of what the problem is. But the problem might be with the person who is using the program. What if they enter information which is not valid. What if instead of entering numbers, a person decides to enter a word or a person decides to enter a letter? What's going to happen? So in such a case, when a program receives invalid inputs, then it's going to also going to encounter problems and it's going to terminate. So when you are checking before the program runs, then you decide to check that the inputs which the programs is being given are valid or not, then what you're doing is you're carrying out an assertion. So when you assert, you are checking to make sure that the inputs the program is receiving are actually true, they make physical sense. For example, if you're talking about radius, as you're going to see during the lecture here, the radius of whatever it is you're talking about needs to be a number which is greater than zero. It cannot be negative. So if someone gives a radius which is negative, then you have to carry out a sanity check, say, is the radius I've been given what it's supposed to be? Is it positive? Is it greater than zero? So if it's less than zero, then the program needs to stop right there and then and tell the person, say, no, I have stopped because of the inputs which is there. So there are three main reasons why you could encounter errors is because one, of poor understanding of the programming language, uh, two, because of poor understanding of the problem, 
and therefore if you don't understand the problem very well you will not be able to develop a solution which is going to work out and three because the inputs which the program has been given are invalid are we clear okay now when it comes to most of the uh, errors which have to do with the programming language most of these errors especially in python are known and they actually have names so the errors which are known and have got names these are what are called standard errors so if an error is a standard one then it's a known error and we have a name for it we give them names say this is the kind of error which occurred this error has occurred and stuff like that for example there is an error called name error this is when you create a variable and you forget to give it a particular value because in Python, when you create a variable right there and then you need to give it a value. But if you forget to give it a value, in other programming languages, that's fine. But in Python, if you forget to do that, then it gives you an error called a name error. The other kind of error, which is a standard error and has got a name, is something called zero division error. If you carry out a division, then you're, 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 you're trying to divide some quantity with zero. That's going to give you an error. Okay, because your result is an infinity. Or if it, maybe if you're trying to open a file, then this particular file does not exist. Then it's going to give you a file not found error. So there are certain errors which are known. And these are what are called standard errors. There are other errors which are not known. And if these errors which are not known, then you need to find out, you need to have a way of obtaining more information about that error so that you can know what, to fix, what the error is and so that you can fix it. Now, how does Python handle errors? Because naturally, if an error occurs, the program is going to terminate. Okay, so how does it handle these errors? Well, Python has got a feature called a try except block. Now, this try except block, what this thing does is that the part of the program, it's not the whole part of your program you suspect can give you an error, but there are certain parts of the program you suspect might give you errors. For example, when you're trying to open a file, what if the file doesn't exist? Then that's going to give you an error and your program is going to terminate. So there are certain places which are dangerous. It's like you're moving, you're, you, there's a journey occurring and there are certain places you know here there could be trouble. Okay? If you're trying to do a division, maybe you're the value at some point, the value you're trying to divide with, you are trying to divide by a zero. It has got a value of zero. So you need to check certain areas. So the, the pieces of code you suspect can create errors. You have to put them in this so-called try accept block so that if the error is raised, then you can handle that particular error there. Otherwise, if there is no error which is raised, then the computer program continues like that. The other thing we we'll have to do is to check for the validity of arguments. So this is basically a sanity check to make sure that the information which the program is being given is what it's supposed to be. If it's not, then Python has got tools also for handling such information. That's pretty really case. So that's what brings us to exceptions and assertions. So exceptions, in a way, exceptions are errors. These, there's a whole lot of reasons why these errors can happen. And assertions is basically a way of checking for the correctness of the information which a pro computer program is supposed to use. So if an error occurs, Python is going to tell you about this error and this is what is referred to as raising an exception. Okay, now, uh, how does Python feel about this whole idea of errors? Now I'm going to, there is a module Code this in Python. So when you install Python, there's a module called this. This module basically outlines the whole idea about how you're supposed to program with Python. So if I run this particular module here, uh, and this is what you get. So basically it says, uh, this is called the Zen of Python by Tim Peters. It says beautiful is better than ugly. Uh, ex explicit is better than implicit. Simple is better than complex. Complex is better than complicated. Flat is better than space, than nested space is better than dense readability counts. Then in special cases, aren't special enough to break the rules, although practicability beats purity. What is of interest to us is here, errors should never pass silently unless explicitly silenced. 
errors. So every time you commit an error, whether the of your un lack of under proper understanding of the programming language, which is Python, or because of logic, every time you commit an error, Python is not forgiving. It will always tell you error, error, error here, error, this kind of error, you committed this kind of error, correct this, correct that, correct that. Most of you have encountered indentation errors, and that is something you have been dealing with over and over, and Python will not get tired of doing that until you fix those errors. Some errors just need to be fixed. Others, if there's an error, you can have a way of maneuvering around so that you kind of silence them explicitly. So you need to handle the error so that it doesn't just crash your program like that. So this is an important part of your programming because, as we said, your computer programs will most definitely have errors because of three things. Your understanding of the language, your understanding of the problem you're trying to solve, or you could understand the language very well, you could understand the problem very well, you write your nice pro computer program, but then the person who is using the program decides to put in values which are invalid and that will cause errors. So the way this thing works, the way the try except block works is that here. So this is a complete thing, try, accept, then else, and finally. So we're going to start bit by bit. We'll start with this bit to try accept. Like I said, these try accept things, you put them, you insert them in those sections of your computer code you suspect can cause errors. Are we clear? You don't put them just anyhow. If it's obvious there is no error here, then there is no need to put a try accept block there. But if there is a part of your code where you suspect there could be an error which could come from there, then you have to use this and you're going to show how to do that. So the way basically it goes is you say, try. So basically you try to do something and hope that you, you, you say try here with a col colon. So you try to execute some piece of code and you sincerely hope that this piece of code does not generate an error. But if it generates an error, then what are you supposed to do? So that's where the accept comes here. So if an error is generated by trying to run this code, what should you do? So you say accept, execute this code. It's like an if else thing kind of thing. But this one is for handling errors. The structure, the arrangement is similar to your our <coughs> if, else if, else if, else like that. And that's basically the way this thing else. Then at the end of the day, you as you can see, you have an else there. Then if, uh, then you ex you say execute this, then there's final. Okay, so basically, so we're going to start with a try accept block, like I've said. Now, we are going to do something which is definitely going to create an error. So we are going to create, we are going to try to print a variable number which we have not assigned a value. If you try to print a variable, which has not been assigned a value, it simply means that that, num that variable is undefined. And we will try to print it here. So when we try to print number here, because you have not given it a value, this is going to generate an error. So we are ge generating an error deliberately here. Okay? And you can see Python, just because I'm doing things deliberately, doesn't forgive. It tells me, it brings out the red pen and says, no, 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 no. You have a name error here and it tries to offer it here there is this line here it tries by all means to indicate and point out which line in my code it found it has found to have committed this error where the error could be and it says i have a problem with this line here print number it doesn't have a problem with the print but what's we have given print which is the number here then down here it says name error name number is not defined. So Python will not let you commit errors. It will point them out. So how do we handle a problem like so this? Just, uh, yes. uh, so by defining the numerical value or something else, what is numerical? Your variables need to be assigned values. It can be a numerical value, it can be a text value, it can be anything. But when you, you, you create a variable the first time, in Python you need to assign it a value right there and then. Yes. Okay. So, how are we going to fix this? So we try to do with, your, with a try. So we say try, followed by semicolon, 
then inside the try here, we try to print number here. So when you do this, Python says, okay, I've seen a try, but now the error is different. It's no longer the, the number it has a problem with, the name error. It doesn't have a problem with the name error anymore. It has a problem with something called syntax error. Syntax is the arrangement of the language. And the way we said earlier here, when you start out with the try, you say try, try needs to come go with an accompanying except. So here we have just said try, try to do something, but there is no except which follows that. So this is a language error. It's a language problem. So we have not shown, according to Python, we have not shown a good understanding of how to use the try. So the try needs to go with an accompanying except. So we will try to fix that. Then we'll say, okay, fine, let's put the except there. So we say try, print number, then accept. So we try to run that. Python says, okay, yeah, there's still a syntax error, but now it says here. It's trying to point out where it thinks there's a problem here. Say there's a problem, uh, unexpected end of far while phasing, then here also it had a problem, so it's pointing at different places. So what it needs is what we are supposed to do when there's an exception, when, when there's an error, and that's basically what you're going to do. So we give it this particular uh, line of code to print. So if it fails to print out number, what should it do? So it should print out the message, exception, or card. So if now if you try to do this here, and now there is no problem. So instead of coming out with a red pen, because it tried to print number, and it failed because number was not defined. Instead of coming out and telling us, shouting us at, at us to say, this variable is not defined, it looks up for what comes after the exception here. And what comes after the exception is this particular message we're printing out. We're saying an exception has occurred. An exception occurred. Okay, we can say an exception has occurred. What? Okay, so an exception has occurred. We don't have information about what kind of exception has occurred. We don't have information about what kind of error has occurred. But previously, we know what kind of error has occurred. It was a name error and also a syntax error. So there are certain exceptions which you know. These are what are called standard errors. So you can modify your try block to say, if a certain, you suspect this kind of error can occur and you know the name of the exception, then you say, try, try to execute a particular kind of code, this particular kind of code. If this particular line generates an exception, an error, then you check for the name of the exception. You say, if the exception is whatever name it has here, you put the name of the exception there. So in our case, we're trying to print number, but because number is not defined, it's going, to, it, it's going to generate a name error. So here we'll put name error. So we say, if the exception is a name error, then this is what we should do. And if the exception is something else, exception number two, then this is what we do. And if the exception is something else, this is what we should do. Then otherwise, if it's something else, this is the message you're supposed to print, like that. So if you have a suspicion to say, these kind of specific errors can occur, then you can say, if this kind of error occurs, do this. If this kind of error occurs, print out this message. If this kind of error occurs, print out this message. But you can't cover all the possible exceptions which can occur. So at the end of the day, you always have to leave room for just saying, uh, an error has occurred, which is what you're going to print after the accept. And these are some of the standard exceptions. For example, uh, these are the names of the exceptions. So there's a list of them, maybe here a three metric error what you're interested in here zero division error an assertion error uh what else uh name error here here key error this is when you're trying to access a key from a dictionary it doesn't exist uh syntax error there is always the this one the in indentation error system error type error value error and a bunch of other kind of errors so in this particular case we want to see how we can handle the name error. 
when you have a variable which is not defined. So again, we print out number. It creates an error, and we know the name of the error is that one here. So now next, what we try to do here is we define. We now know the name of the error. So we say try, try to print number. We know this is going to generate an error because we have not defined it. Then we say accept. Then we put the name of the exception here, which is name error. Then under name error here, we say print variable is not defined. So if a name error occurs, we want to print out this message. You say, fine, there's an error which has occurred, but we want to let you know this is a kind of error which has occurred. Variable has not been defined. Else, what else should we do? Except if there is something else, then we just say uh, print uh, an exception has occurred. An exception has occurred. We don't have information about that. An exception has occurred. So if you run this, now it, it doesn't print out exception has occurred. It prints out this particular message which corresponds to the ki exactly the kind of error which has occurred. Okay. So you can match specific errors so that you can print out certain specific messages, which this is more, this is more, more informative, uh, kind of like uh, informative than just saying an error has occurred. Now we know what kind of error has occurred because we specifically suspected that a name error is going to be. It's not really specifically suspected. We know because we're creating it because we didn't define number there. I found. So that's how you can handle standard errors. You look up the name of the error when when you're doing your Python code. Python always generates these errors. So you can look up the name of the error and you can create an exception like that. So that your so if, yes. Oh yeah, I see the name error. You have to look up because I can see it has a name before. Yes, yes, yes. It name it knows what kind of errors. Yeah. yeah, it knows. So the first time you run, say if you are running you try to print out number, then it creates a name error. Python knows what kind of error Oh, you have committed anywhere, anywhere, anywhere yes anywhere. anywhere it knows what kind of error you have committed anywhere and it will try to provide if the name is the, if it's, if this is a standard by standard we mean if this is a known error mm. then it will provide the name yeah. if it's not a known error then it will try to give whatever kind of explanation it will find so there are certain errors which are known these are standard yeah. errors and there are other errors which are not known and those are not the standard ones. And you'll see how to handle both standard errors and errors which are not known. There's also a zero division error. Now you get a zero division error when you try to divide a number or a value by zero. This operation I'm trying to do here, I know this operation is going to create an error. So in this particular case, I try to divide three divided by zero. When I try to do this, it generates an error. So and because Python knows this, it even provides us the name of the error, which is zero division error. And it says, I've ah, got a problem with this particular line, and uh, the name of the error is zero division error, and it tries to even provide a description of the error. It's not just the name of the error it's providing, but it also tries to provide a informative description of the error. It says there is a division by zero operation which is being carried out here, and this is what's generating the error. Okay, so in this particular case, why would you want to do this? Okay, so how would you handle, first of all, not why, but how would, you, how would you handle this? So in this particular case, this operation we suspect will cause an error. So we try to carry out this operation, but because we suspect and we know it's going to cause an error, we put it in the try section. Then after we have carried out this operation there, we next comes the accept and we specify specifically zero division error like that then under that we say division by zero then else if there is some other kind of error which is which is going to occur we don't know why but as error is going to occur we can say exception has occurred has occurred so in this case if you run this this prints out the message division by zero so it doesn't bring out the red pen but it doesn't carry out the operation because the operation fails the division operation fails and it will print out the message saying, oh, I didn't work out because of this division by that. This is something you'd want to do if you've got a function which is at some point has to divide things. So you want to check if the division, 
when it's carried out, if it's, this thing is going to divide by zero, and if it's going to divide by zero, then you want your function to run. It won't carry out the operation because of an error, but it, you want your operation, your thing to inform you to say, okay, fine, we found this particular error, then just right, right there and then just crashing. Because here our program runs, but here it crashes. So we don't want this. Okay. Another one is, another standard known error is where you're going to file, you look, you're trying to open a file, but that particular file doesn't exist. You think a file, maybe someone deleted it. So you think a particular file is in your computer, but that particular file doesn't exist. So in a particular case, we'll try to open this file called whitebat.txt. This file doesn't exist on my computer. So I, this particular file, I, I, I give the name of this file to this variable, file name. Then after that, I try to print out file name. That's fine. Then now I try to open the file using this using the open function the open function so you give it uh the name of the file so that it has got an argument file where where you attach the name of the file then the reason why you're trying to open the file we're trying to open the file for reading but i'm trying to open a file for reading and this file doesn't exist so once if this particular f operation runs smoothly then the this particular file object is going to be created so if i run this what I get is this. So this gives me say file not found error. Then it tries to explain, it tries to point out where the prop it thinks the problem is. Then it here this, then it tries to say no such file or directory whitebat.txt. So it tries to offer some explanation about whatever if this is a file or it's a directory, I can't find it. So in this particular case, again, you can see the file not found error is something which Python knows. This is a standard error. So similarly, you can do the same thing. So this time around, we say, okay, fine. Let's try to open. So we, say, we, we do a try. Then we say, let's try to open this particular file. So the name of the file is whitepad.txt. Then we say, with, or I say, not with, let me just say, uh, the same way we had it, file objects, objects, like that. Uh, so let me this. The next, I try to read the file. I try to read the contents of the file. Then I try to print out the contents of the file. But I'm trying to do these things to a file which doesn't exist. So here I have, I have a suspicion this or this might work or it might not work. So whatever I'm suspecting might work or might not work, then uh, I put it under the, the try. So in this case, we know that this particular white bad thing doesn't exist. So if it doesn't exist, then we put this standard non exception where, and we're going to print the message you say file, file name doesn't exist, or file has been successfully, else here, file has been successfully opened. Okay, so now I've included also the else part here. So this is when there's an error, and else will say the file has been opened. Like that. So if I run this, it tells me file white part of txt does not exist and it stops. However, there is another file on this particular computer, resistance to txt, which is actually there and has got data. So if we try to open this other one, resistance to txt, and with what we have done again here, so I'll say file object, object, open. Stick to. Uh, I think that sounded like a person wanted to. Okay. okay. Then we read. Account. We read the contents of the file. Okay, then now 
after that we try to print so here uh, so we try to open for this one when you do that because the file exists uh, oh, oh, oh sorry 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 oh there colon band so if we do this so file resistance.txt the operation runs the file gets read we read its contents so if the file gets read then there is no problem here then these other bits here they say it runs it says uh, file successfully opened then we print the contents so here it says file resistance.txt successfully opened material copper length in meters resistance in homes we get all this data then the author and just create that particular thing. So the point here is those bits of your computer code you suspect will create or might generate an error. You put them under the under the try. You put them try them out. If it creates an error, then an exception will be raised. And if you, sus you have got a good suspicion of what kind of exception is going to be raised, you can even anticipate some of these things. Say, okay, fine. If it's this kind of error, then do this. If it's this kind of error, then do this. Otherwise, do this. Are we clear? Okay. Now, you can't anticipate all types of errors. It's not possible for you to anticipate all type of, all type of errors. And in such a case, you want if you can't anticipate the error which is going to occur you want to tell us okay an error has occurred then you want to gather as much information as possible about what kind of error has occurred now remember we did the three divided by zero and we found out that okay fine uh there is an error there if, if you divide by zero that kind of error you you, you you can generate an error so here what we are doing here is we, we define a function called divide this function called divide, we're going to give it first number and second number. And when we divide first number and second number, what we want to do is we want to get a quotient. So in this particular case, in this particular function, we try to divide. We try to carry out this division. The division of first number by second number. When you try to carry out this division of first number by second number, we hope that if it's successful, we'll store the result whatever that is going to come up in result then will return the result but there could be errors here there is potential for errors for example the second number can be a zero if the second number is a zero so that we try to divide by zero then we say except zero division if this kind of error is generated because the second number is a zero then we want to print out division by zero then there could be other kind of errors. For example, maybe a person doesn't give us numbers. Maybe a person gives us letters, like A or B. How do you divide A and B? Those are not numbers. So that could also generate all sorts of errors. For now, if such a case happens, we just want to print an exception as a card. But first of all, we know that when you're dividing, there's potential for a zero division error. So if there's potential for a zero division error, this particular case where there's potential zero division error we want to take care of it using this standard exception this known error zero division error we know it so we want to take care of this particular bit here exactly then this other one here we leave it for any other kind of exception like that so in this particular case if i run that particular function divide that's fine so here if i say divide uh, 10 by 2.5 then we get the answer here yeah, there's no problem it runs then we print out answer there we have then you say divide 20 by 10 so we say divide 20 10 then we get an answer there no problem we do that then here we try to divide 5 by 0 so we say divide we give it 5 then we give it 0 so the first number is 5 the second number is 0 and we try to store the answer in the result in this particular operation in answer. This particular operation is going to generate a zero error. Because the second number is a zero, and as you can see from how the function has been created, we'll be dividing the second number, which is a zero, by, we'll be dividing five by zero. So this one is going to generate a zero division error. If it generates a zero division error, 
we want to catch that zero division error using this so that we print out this particular message to inform the person and say, okay, we tried to carry out the division as you told us to do, but we couldn't do it because we are dividing by zero. Are we clear? Okay, so that's basically what we are trying to do there. So in this particular case, when we try to run this, it doesn't spill out all the red stuff and everything. It just tells us, uh, I tried to carry out the division and, and I found out that there's a zero division error. So I'll not give you a result. I'm just informing you to say, this is the message. Are we clear? I can also say, okay, fine. I'll give the first value to be A, which is a letter. Then the second value is going to be three. So this time around, it's not a zero division error. It's just because the person who is using this particular function has decided they're going to put in this particular value, but that particular value they've given, that is an invalid input. Okay, so they've put in an input to a function. It's not because the function is wrong, no. It's because of the value they're putting in the function. The value they're putting in the function is not correct. So it's not of the right form. So if you try to divide this particular bit like that, then what you get is just a message which says an exception has occurred. So if you look at this particular, you won't be able to figure out, if you're not familiar with Python, you won't be able to figure out, say, you can't divide, a, 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 what's this, a, a string by a number. You can't carry out this particular operation. But that particular inf additional information is not there. So how do we go about looking for this additional information so that we can provide more meaningful information? Now, the way we go about getting this additional information is from a module called sys. This module called sys has got a function called exception information. What this function does is it literally, whenever an exception occurs, that's how Python is able to print, try to print out these error messages, say this kind of error has occurred and try to give you as much information as possible about the error. This particular function, except info, is going to carry, collect information about the exception and after it collects information about the exception, it will give you this information as a tuple. It doesn't give it to you as a list, it will give you, you as a tuple so that no one can modify the information about the error. So we we'll redefine this divide uh, function. So we redefine it. So we say uh, define, divide, first number, second number. So we try to carry out the division. If the division is successful, fine, return the result. Otherwise, if there's a zero error, print out division by zero, then accept here. What do you want to do? We will print out an exception as occurred, but we need to collect more information. So we will import from this sys module, from sys module, we import this function here, exception info. So here, this is the import we're saying from sys import exception info. Now, what this exception info does, function does, we're going to run it here. It's going to collect all the information about the error which has occurred. And all that information is going to be stored in this variable called error. Then after that, We'll print out exception has occurred, has occurred. Now, we will check the data type of the error, of this thing here. What kind of data does this have? So that's what you're doing here. So print data type of error. So it will tell us what the data type of error is. We'll see that it's going to be a tuple. Then we'll print out what error is then finally, we'll try to provide information. So the first item is the name of the error, then followed by uh, a colon, then the second item is the type of error which has occurred. Okay, as we are going to see. Okay, so now we repeat our operation of trying to divide by, trying to divide by, what is this? By this, by, by uh, A by that. So here, if we try to do this particular division, this is what we get. So this particular thing, so this is everything after the except here, all this. 
So all these instructions are carried out. And if you look at the instructions carried out, there is here an exception has occurred. Then there is this particular statement which says data type of error. Then it says tuple. So the error, what's in the error is actually a tuple which contains information about what kind of error has occurred. Then we print out error here. When you print out error, this is what we have. This is a tuple we're printing out. All of this. All of them. So what do you see? What you're seeing here is that the first item in the tuple is the description of the error. So it's a type error. Okay? Next is some kind of it means that you can't divide text by a number. Oh, okay. yes. You can't carry out this kind of an operation. Mm -hmm. The next comes some kind of a description of what is actually happening here. It says here, unsupported operands and types for division. You're carrying out a division. So it's saying you can't divide a string by an integer. This is enough information for a person to figure out what kind of error has occurred. Then after that, at the end, here we print out this particular message. So the tuple which carries information about the error always has got this information. It also has this. If you notice something, every time we have committed an error, there is always this kind of message. Trace back object at something, something, something. If you go back and find out where we committed an error deliberately before we did all the other things. Okay, not really. But this this bit here, this is just but there. No, no, that's not how it works. Because it's a string. You can't divide strings by. Right. Okay. And it may be what he's saying is if you assign the A, but you're that assigned. would be something yeah, different. It will still not work because it's a string divide, being divided by. No, but it is what he means is uh, the variable a yeah. you give it a value. Yeah. Oh, okay. If it's a variable a, that's fine. But this is not a variable. The oh. way it is currently, it's, no, it's, it's not a variable. Okay. It's a string. Yeah. Similarly, if we did the same thing here, like that, if you try to divide ten divided by a, you would still get the same kind of error. So, uh, that's, so basically that's how you go about gathering more information about what kind of mistake has happened, like that. Uh, there's also, you can also include something called finally. This finally thing, you always run, it always runs. Something which is after finally always runs whether certain exception things have happened or not like that. So you can have, for example, you try, you try to execute some code, then you have got some, some error, then some known errors, then you carry out what should be done after you've exhausted all these known errors. If you have exhausted going through all these known errors, then what should, be, what should you do? There is accept, then you can always include finally, which is kind of like not really necessary, but if you want to say find the program has reached or whatever the end, you can say that. Okay. So you can put something after finally there. 
So in this case, for divide, if we write our divide, here first name, second name, we try to do this, the result of that. So first we check the zero error, then we check our accept. Now we have, now that we know what information is where, when we do our, our what is, um, our essay, uh, import, uh, we say from, from sys, from sys, uh, import, uh, accept info, import, uh, accept, accept info, so here I will say from sys, from sys, import, uh, accept check info, then Get, get exception data, get exception info, data, so here we, we do that, then you print exception like that, then So here you have some, so this is about what comes of the exception so that you can print out additional information about the exception. Then under the else here you can say division not successfully run. And then finally you can say I always run. Whether the, this one runs whether there's an exception or not. Okay. These other ones, this one will run if there's zero division error. And if there's a zero division error, then this is going to run. If there is any other kind of error, this bit will run. Okay? Then else uh, division not successfully done, then that bit there. Okay? So here, you say that divide by 20, it carries out your division, then it says I'll always run. So we can see the stuff printed after finally, whether the code runs successfully or not, that bit always run so if you there is something which you want to do after all these things have been done then there's that bit there uh, if you divide uh, 10 by uh, 0 in this particular case this is going to generate a zero division error so it prints out zero division error and it tells you I'll always run if you divide 10 by a it prints out what's here then uh, the what's there also gives you a description of whatever the error is and it still says I always run like that. Okay. So that's basically the final part. Whatever comes after finally will always kind of run. Now the last part we need to do is how do we carry out a sanity check on the information which you're giving a function. So in this particular case the way you do that is by using a statement called asset. So how do you go do that? You type asset, then some kind of expression which you're going to check for. For example, if we're talking about radius, you will say radius must be greater than zero. So you type asset, then expression radius must be greater than zero. Then after that, you might want to print some message. Say, if this particular test fails, what should I do? You want to print out a message. Okay, then that's what the argument bit there is there for. So basically, so if this particular thing fails, if this expression turns out to be not true, then something called an assertion error is going to be raised. And as this assertion error is being raised, it's going to be accompanied by this message which you have typed here. Are we clear? So you carry out a sanity check, you say asset, then you check for a particular condition so that only data which satisfies that particular condition is accepted, then if it fails, an assertion error is going to be raised, then this particular message, which comes after argument, is going to be uh, printed out. So in here, we define a function called area circle. So this one creates the area of, a, uh, works out the area of a circle. So we import from math, we import pi, 
Then here, we try to calculate the area of a circle, here, using this particular expression here. So we need radians. For us to do that, then you retain the circle. So for this particular function, if the radius is 10, no problem. Okay. What did we do? Oh, I didn't run this. I didn't run this. So if the radius is 10, no problem. How about if the radius is zero? Do we have a radius, a circle with a radius of zero? No, unless you have a black hole. But it still works out. So as much as zero is a number, zero does not make practical sense because you don't have a circle with a radius zero. All circles have a radius is greater than zero, but it still works out the calculation. How about if the radius is negative? In this particular case, it still works out. It still tries to work out. Okay? The reason why you have got something which makes sense is because when you are carrying out the area thing, there's a square root there, so you don't see that there's a mistake, but there's a mistake, and these mistakes can be very, very expensive. So how do we do a check for that? We say, inside our function, we redefine it. Here, we want to ensure that radius is positive and then zero. So we'll say, asset, then after asset, we say, radius must be greater than zero. We do this here, the first part. So if you run this, then now we do it for 10, that's fine. Then we do it for zero here. Then it says, uh, now there's an error. Because that particular condition has not been satisfied. Now it says assertion error. But it doesn't provide information. Here where there's supposed to be information about the error, no information is there. Nothing is there. And that's where that particular argument thing comes in. So if, and also similarly here, no information is provided about the error. So you know there's an assertion error, but there's no information provided. That's where this particular bit comes in now. So you say asset radius greater than zero. If this kind of error test fails, what information, what message should accompany this assertion error? That's for where the argument is. You say radius must be positive and non-zero. So in this particular case, now if you try to do that for 10, then for zero, now it says, okay, there's an assertion error. I found an assertion error. This thing has failed. And what is the message? Now it says radius must be positive and non-zero. Is that clear? Yes. So now we have an error. And we have seen how to handle errors. This is an error we know. So now that bit where there is, we can put in a try except law. Okay. So that's how you do your sanity check. Like that. So this bit which, we, which, which is causing an error, the assertion, we know that the assertion can cause an error. Now we put it in a try except block. Say if a person gives us val data which is not valid, then we want to raise an error. So that error can be an assertion error. So we do the math, now we do the calculation, then now we say accept assertion, then print out this particular message. If there's an assertion error, then accept everything else like that. Now, so finally, now we try to work out the radius for zero, it gives us this. If you try to work out the radius for a negative number, it gives us that. If you try to work out the radius with a string, which is, we can't do calculation of the string, now it will even tell us, okay, there's a different kind of error, this one, which is not supported like that. Okay, so we've come to the end. Two minutes over time. Any questions? Is it clear? Uh, I have a question. Mm. Uh, while you are writing the program, is there no any other way of trying to tell you to say as you are writing in here, if there is a syntax error rather than waiting for you to run? You have 